Yeah, the last couple of weeks have been, you know, a lot of time spent in the training room, a lot of time spent with the strength trainers, um, the athletic trainers, you know, doing whatever they say, however many times a day, getting what I need to get done. Um, I've made progress each day to the point where, you know, I feel like I can get back and start doing, you know, some drills and practice. How much uh, catching up do you? Uh, how much catching up do you think you have to do right now? There's a, quite a bit of competition amongst that tight end group right now. Yeah, there is. You know, the, one of the benefits of getting to sit back is you get to kind of see the whole picture um, offensively, schematically of what we're doing. So, you know, mentally, I, I feel very prepared and you know ready to get in and do everything that I'm asked to do um, from a mental standpoint. Um, Right now, physically, they're still working me back into things. So it'll be a, an ongoing process, um, however long that takes. But I, I feel prepared, you know, um, mentally and in my ability to do, you know, what I got what I got to get done. Were you getting at all anxious or antsy to get back on the field, just seeing the tight ends do what they're doing on the field? Absolutely, it's very hard to watch. It's very hard to watch. Um, you know, unfortunately, I've been a spectator for the majority of my time here so far. Um, you know, it's something you got to be patient with because this uh, hamstring injury is not something you can tough through. You know, like some injuries where you can wrap it up and get out there. Hamstring, you'll just keep re-injuring it if you try to do that. So I, uh, I've had to be patient. It's been very, very difficult, very frustrating at times, you know, watching instead of playing. But my time will come. Do you think that, I mean, coming from an Ivy League school, doing the stuff that you do, do you feel that mentally you're ready? I mean, do you think that mentally the, the playbook and everything, that you're ready to go and you understand this offense and you don't need much time to kind of grasp it? I do feel I'm ready. I mean, one, you can control the things you control. If I can't get on the field, I can be in my notes and in my playbook and in the meetings just as diligently as anybody else. So I, I do feel prepared to, pl to play. I do uh, feel that I know what I'm doing. Um, now it's just a matter of being able to get out there and do it. Is that what you have been doing, just getting your head in the notes every day? Absolutely, yeah. How did the, the injury occur? Were you, did it happen in the, uh, when your guys, your guys were running a conditioning test or were you, you were hurt before that, weren't you? Yeah, I was, I was hurt initially during um, mini camp back okay, in the spring. Right. Um, it was just uh, during, while I was running a route, my hamstring pulled and um, you know, I started my recovery process from there. It was it must have been pretty serious then for it to last as long? Well. Yeah, it's it was it was it was minor, but it's been reoccurring. So I've had to take the time to to get it healthy, get it better, so that it doesn't keep reoccurring. Mm -hmm. How would you um, how would you describe yourself as as a tight end? I'm very much a hybrid tight end wide receiver in my own mind um, one who's who's able to block and is big enough and strong enough to block but really my training up to this point in my career and what I feel I'm best at is route running. so that being said um, I can be used in different areas to you know create different mismatch opportunities um, but you know really being strong and fast and, and mobile for my size is what I thought I bring to the table. What's it like coming in as a rookie and you got a pro bowler like Gary Barnage to uh, to talk to and to, to lean on and, and learn from? It's a uh, it's it's an extremely fortunate opportunity that I have um, that we all have in that room. You know the younger tight ends to learn from somebody who's done it a long time and who has done it very well. Um, he is is like a coach. You know, and he's he's very helpful for all of us. Um, he asks really good questions in meetings. He processes the game on a higher level and sees things that I, you know, need to learn to see out of defenses. And uh, we've we've learned a lot from him. How do the things that you've had to learn here compare to a course at Princeton? <laughs> it's like going, it is a little bit like going to school. Um, you know, you sit in in meetings for probably half the day you know you, we meet longer than we practice um, and your notebook is open your textbook or playbook is open um, there's notes on the screen and you're you know you're looking at the uh, at the screen you're taking notes 
and it's, it's very much like going to school. Um, lots of detail. Um, Would this be an upper level course? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say so. The uh, playbook is, is thicker than most textbooks. Yeah. When you look at a guy like Gary, not a high draft pick, doesn't have the you know the celebrity swag or, or however you want to define that. Do you, do you look at him maybe as a, a little bit of a source of inspiration as a guy who, who's coming from an Ivy League school who, you know, it's not exactly a conference that many people think of, you know, finding NFL players from? Yeah, absolutely. Gary is a product of hard work and of consistency and uh, coaches in this league and on this team, uh, they uh, depend on him and they count on him and they trust him. And so he's built that trust by being consistent, by doing things the right way. And that's how he's gotten to where he is. Hey, so excuse the bluntness of this question, but do you, um, do you go online, do you read internet stuff? Because a lot of these guys who've never seen you say that the Browns made a mistake when they, when they you know, did. Do you see that stuff? <laughs> I've actually taken my internet browser off my phone, and I, I very rarely am online. So I hear it from other people sometimes, but I don't read it myself, no. What, what does that mean? What do you think? I mean, they haven't, you haven't even been able to practice. I don't know how they can make that assessment. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of attention put on the draft um, because it's such a because people love watching it so much, but player acquisition happens all year round. And people like me come in all the time and, and have roles on NFL rosters. And um, you know, me coming from a smaller school and not being as well known as some of the other draft picks prior to the draft, that's just kind of the inevitable situation that I'm in. It's, not, it's nothing that is bothersome or, you know, it's expected, in other words. Says, what is it, Seth? I'm sorry. What do you think the uh, importance of the second tight end position is in Hugh Jackson's offense? Do you have a feel of how much it's used? In what? Yeah, there's a, there's a huge importance on the second tight end, and there's a also a, a huge importance on the third tight end. I mean, this is an offense that loves tight ends and will use tight ends. Um, you know, there there needs to be multiple guys in that room that know exactly what they're doing, can execute it at a high level. Um, and there'll be multiple tight ends on the field at the same time. It's very important. And any of the three could be uh, getting targeted in the passing game? Absolutely. One, yes. Are your role so specific? If it's a pullback, you might be in line or what? That, you know, that, that decision is the coaches. You know, we, we study for everything and are able to do everything in that room in terms of fullback one tight end, two tight end, three tight end. Uh, the coaches put us where they think we will be the best, but we, we got to know them all. And do you think, uh, despite missing the first 10 or 11, 10 days, that it's still a free-for-all for those two spots? Again, I have I've, I've, I've no idea. Uh, that's the coach's decision. There's certainly a lot of good players in that room. Um, the coaches will sort it out.